Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a meeting of the Clackamas County Commissioners. And uh, would you please rise and follow me in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, Mr. Chair, I'll uh, I'll go ahead and do the uh, roll. I do want to uh, introduce uh, for county council today. We have Mr. Stephen Madcor, and of course, our serving as our clerk to the board is Mary Rathke. I'll go ahead and start with a roll with Commissioner Fisher here, Commissioner Schrader here, Commissioner Savas here, Chair Humberts here, and Jim Savas. Yes, and of course, uh, uh, the chair. Uh, Bernard is uh, out uh, of the of the office this week uh, and uh, not available, so that's, which is why you're serving as chair, Mr. So, For those who it's... might be interested, Chair Bernard's representing the county at a water environmental services conference, um, and uh, he'll be back next week. So, thank Good. you. Um, you before we go into a presentation, uh, yeah. Before we go into the formal agenda, I did want to take a quick uh, moment. Uh, some liberties here because uh, next week, Tuesday, uh, the 31st, will mark the very last day that this individual will be a county uh, employee. We have uh, Mark Gonzalez, who has um, served as the director of our uh, Department of Finance since January of 1995 and actually has been serving citizens of Clackamas County for nearly 34 years uh, is retiring. And of course, his, in addition to what's been an outstanding contribution um, here to county government and the citizens that rely on us for the things that we do, Mark's also uh, served in a role of serving um, the state uh, as the past president and past board member of the Oregon uh, Government Finance Officers Association. And of course, he's been given honorary life membership uh, there with that organization. Uh, and he's been a member of the Government Finance Officers Association of the United States and Canada for nearly 30 years. What's really notable is that Mark um, just completed a stint serving as the president of the Government Finance Officers Association, which is uh, technically, it's an international organization. So that's quite an honor uh, to have served in that particular capacity. I think it says something too about uh, our team here at Clackamas County that uh, Mark was able to serve not just Clackamas County, but the country and, uh, and other countries as well, advancing the practice of good government finance. So uh, he's, uh, of course, he's been involved with I don't know how many budgets uh, uh, here, <laughs> in addition to uh, serving as the, the director in administering operations. Um, he had a Bachelor of Arts degree from uh, in Business Administration and Accounting from Portland State University, but he's also an Oregon duck. He's receiving his MBA from the University of Oregon. Uh, he uh, has served uh, six terms as a citizen volunteer on the Multnomah County's Investment Advisory Board. And uh, I just got to say, he's, he's been... For, for me here in the past five years that I've had a, the pleasure and honor to be able to work with uh, Mark. Uh, he's been an invaluable advisor and support, um, uh, making sure that the resources of the finance department are there to be able to help uh, your county administrator um, do the work that I need to do to uh, bring forth a budget and see that it's all carried out. And I just wanted to thank Mark for that. Uh, of course, his last official day will be uh, Tuesday of next week, and we do have a, an opportunity to uh, s celebrate his uh, uh, better than three decades of service uh, here in the uh, early evening on, uh, on Monday. But Mark, I just wanted to thank you and give you an opportunity uh, in the eyes of the citizens you've served uh, to be acknowledged for your service. Well, thank you, Don. <laughs> I 
I didn't expect to have my whole uh, curriculum vitae uh, uh, <laughs> recited, but that's very nice of you to do so. Thank you. Um, it has been a long time. Uh, it, does, it doesn't seem like a long time to me, but uh, uh, 33 years and nine months just kind of slipped by. And during that time, you know, Clackamas <laughs> County has gone from being a relatively quiet uh, government here, out here on the south side, and uh, gotten more and more active in the region and in the state and become more important, I think, uh, in the role that we play. Really glad to be part of that. Uh, Don is my sixth boss here. Uh, I've served with all the, uh, all the, the uh, county administrators that the county has ever had, so um, seen a lot of changes. Life uh, has offered me a lot of opportunities here. Um, I think right now we're in a period of really great new energy for the county and moving forward with a lot of a lot of ideas and a lot of uh, programs. So um, to leave at this point, it feels like I'm kind of on top of a wave, which has been great. So I thank you. I, I did bring some uh, notes that I wanted to make a few remarks, and I hope that this won't take more than half an hour. <laughs> uh, actually, this is, this is something, one of the things that happens when you uh, leave after a long career, if you have an office, if you're lucky enough to have an office, which I've had for many years, you have a lot of stuff in your office, and so uh, you start going through it and getting rid of it. And I'm, I uh, found this item, uh, just in case the idea of uh, annexing the city of Gresham ever comes up again, I have a full fiscal study from 1998. So. Yes, uh, I thought you might be able to use it. It's, uh, it's incredible, some of the things that have happened and some of the changes that have happened. I've seen a lot of it go by, so it's been my pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank all of you. Mark, I would like to say, as one of the new guys uh, on the block here, that um, any time I have called your office, both you and your staff have been extraordinarily helpful. Um, as folks that have only been here a year and a half, we have a lot to learn, and um, the, the support that we've received from you and your staff is very much appreciated. So thank you so much. Well, thank you. Thank you. I'm very lucky to have a great staff. Uh, Mark, I'd just like to echo um, uh, Commissioner Humberson's points there and um, say thank you for your service and I do have one curious question on the Gresham thing that was initiated really that they were seeking to leave Multnomah County is that yes. correct? Yes, let's leave Multnomah County and be annexed by Clackamas County and just join our wonderful world so uh, that didn't come to pass as you are aware. <laughs> yeah, I lived in Gresham at the time so I remember that very clearly. <laughs> I, I wouldn't mind seeing the study and I'm happy to meet with Mayor Bemis to see what, uh, what, <laughs> what you can work out. Well, oddly enough, the first uh, person from Oregon who was the president of the GFOA, Bonnie Kraft, w uh, served as a uh, city manager at the time, and mm -hmm. um, I, I have the honor of following f her and four other Oregonians in that role. So that's a, that was a great great run for Clackamas County and, and for Oregon. So. Thank you. Well, if there's no other comments, I think one more round of applause is due you. <laughs> I believe we now have a presentation. Mr. Yes, Park. thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, as always, uh, Clackamas County is an award-winning county, and we received uh, uh, several achievement awards from the National Association of Counties, uh, and I want to have our, our uh, uh, public and governmental affairs uh, uh, gentleman here, to Todd Logan, to talk about these awards, their meaning, and we have the departments who uh, help make them happen here as well. So Todd, the floor is yours. I'll go right ahead. Thank you, Don. Uh, good morning, Commissioners. I'm Todd Logan with Public and Government Affairs. Uh, the National Association of Counties unites America's 3,069 county governments. The association provides a venue for county governments to share ideas and collaborate on ways to improve the services we provide. Each year, they present the NACO Awards. The NACO Achievement Awards program seeks to recognize innovative county government programs. Programs are judged on innovation, creativity, measurable results, effectiveness, and enhanced levels of citizen participation uh, in their local government. This year, Clackamas County received four 2018 Achievement Awards. We've got representatives from each of the four awarded programs that I've asked to be here to give you a brief overview, and then I'd like to get a group photo if you're willing. So to lead off, we have Ed Nieto, 
from, uh, and he shepherded the Water Environment Services Information and Education Program for Water Environment Services Program. Good morning, Commissioners, Administrator. Uh, thank you so much for allowing us to share with you some of the details about these campaigns. If I may, I'd like to extend a Clackamas County welcome to my uh, mother and stepfather who are visiting from Nevada today. They're here with us in the audience. Hey, Sitting in the front row. <laughs> welcome. Thank you. Uh, the impetus for the campaign stemmed from the necessity to educate West customers, partners, and stakeholders about the urgent need for building additional as you know, uh, solids handling capacity, uh, which is required to avoid a possible building moratorium in the county. In late 2015, West commissioned a survey to gauge customer awareness of West, its mission, its priority products, projects, excuse me. Uh, survey results reveal that while 94% of customers approved of wastewater treatment services, only 14% could correctly identify West as their service provider. Confusion about service providers partly stemmed from the fact that West ratepayers receive their monthly bills from the cities that are wholesale customers of West like Gladstone, Oregon City, and West Lynn. Another key part of the survey revealed that nearly half of the customers preferred to learn about their services from experts in the field rather than appointed spokespersons, thus providing the idea for the Meet the West Experts video series. The videos were designed to raise awareness of West, its dedication to protecting public health, the environment, and future economic growth, um, and of course also the uh, great need for the infrastructure upgrade. The videos featured a wide array of West experts, ranging from a customer service specialist to the capital projects manager and a member of the operations crew. All proved to be charismatic and articulate ambassadors for West. The videos aired in a variety of channels, including uh, the cable channel, uh, YouTube, social media, website, as well as during West presentations to business alliances, chambers of commerce, CPOs, rotary clubs, and various community groups. The videos also featured the West URL, which helped drive viewers to the West web pages to learn more about West and our projects. Uh, the result was an increase in awareness of West and its priority projects, and also measurable increases in visits to the West web pages. Uh, from January 2017 to January 2018, the number of unique views to the West pages increased by 62%, thanks to these and other outreach efforts. From PGA, I'd like to especially thank Garrett Teague and Tim Heider for their stellar work on this project, in addition to Amy Kyle and Gary Schmidt for their support and guidance. Thanks also producers to producers Darren Averman, Nicole Kuhn, and Ryan Garris. From Wes, I'd like to thank the following experts for their outstanding performances. Greg Irley, Lynn Chicoyne, Patrick Leach, Patty Hutchison, Amy Willman, Blake Rains, John Nagy, and Matt Zach. Thank you very much. Does any, any questions have any questions? Questions? Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> The next one we have is Gary Johnson, also from Water Environment Services and the Keep the Wipes Out program. I just wanted to thank Judge Darling, a retired judge, and Commissioner Sonia Fisher for getting the message out about targeting new parents, taking their children home for the first time, and educating them on keeping wipes out of our pipes seems so trivial that a small little wipe could cause so many problems in our urbanized areas worldwide. But we need to be very mindful that a toilet is not a trash can. And this campaign, it, it features um, a really cute little baby and it targets new parents and which is unique. We spoke with a number of our national associations and they were not aware of any campaign that targeted new parents. So a little seed grew and it became the Wipes Out campaign featuring a very cute little baby who is um, one of our staff's new children. And also it was picked up by the local newspaper and featured in a story so I just wanted to thank everybody for all their help, especially the um, Children, Youth, and Families, Healthy Families Division, and all of those who were instrumental in getting the information into the packets that were in the hands of the new parents. And all of, the, all, all of our jurisdictions and West customers who 
uh, put this information within their bills and got the message out to all their customers too. So thank you very much. Anybody have any questions? I have one. Have you seen a reduction? Um, we actually um, have put less effort into changing um, new the mechanical pu pumps that have to tear up the, um, the wipes. And so there are improvements, getting the word out, but we still battle it daily. We're still working so hard to make sure that um, we can grind these up. I, I don't think people really realize that it's not just the infrastructure that's being ruined all over the place, but the, our pipes as well in your homes can clog yep. and you'll have backups within your homes which affect your neighbors. So if we can just spread the word, don't flush wipes. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Uh, the next award recipient, uh, Deidre Landon with uh, DTD, and the program was working with stakeholders to streamline transportation system development charges. Okay, is this on? Yes. Okay, my name is Deidre Landon, and I'm the Administrative Services Manager for the Department of Transportation and Development. Thank you all for having me here today. Um, so transportation system development charges are not the most exciting thing in the world for most people to talk about. Um, so I do want to make sure to be clear that NACO did not in fact give us an award for the fact that we charge these fees as most jurisdictions around the nation charge these fees. What we were lucky enough, I think, um, to receive this award for was the unique approach that we chose to take when we did our most recent update. Um, we really wanted to make sure to do it differently. Um, historically, when people go through these plans, they, you'll have different stakeholder work groups, you'll have staff at a table, you'll have um, stakeholders at a table, but definitely with the system development charges, you've never had those people at the same table, which I thought was a missed opportunity. I thought it was really important for the development community to sit down with our staff and understand the needs from both sides and then as we were having the discussions, we could balance what the, what the best decision at each point might be. So that's really what we ended up receiving an award for, was just that, um, that different approach to our process. So in addition to that, um, it's been impossible historically to get the public involved in um, any type of outreach we try to do before the process is over. So typically what happens is you'll go to issue a permit after you've adopted a new plan and everybody's like, when did this happen? <laughs> I didn't know what's going on. Um, and we were able to identify a way using um, emails through our permitting system, as well as working with the Home Builders Association to do a targeted email list to about 1,600 different developers that we knew did work within our county um, to let them know about a virtual open house we were doing. And we, out of that effort, received about 275 responses, which I know is not um, earth shattering in many cases, but when it comes to system development charges, we were pretty darn impressed with how many people gave us that feedback. So we were able to use the feedback from those 275 people, go back to our work group, and finalize our plan recommendations before we brought them to the board. Um, so when the board did adopt the new plan, which was back in December of 2017, it's not uncommon, um, I don't know about Clackamas County specifically, but generally in jurisdictions, it's not uncommon to have some uh, people there to testify uh, maybe less than favorably on the adoption of these different plans. We had one person in our audience that day, and it actually was a representative from the Portland Metro Home Builders Association and he both testified orally and put a letter into the record to not only support the process, but suggest that other jurisdictions might also look to our process as a benchmark when they decide to do their updates in the future, which I thought was very, we were very thankful for their support throughout the process and we were very pleased that they were willing to do that as well. Um, so really in closing, as we um, were preparing to embark on a very small update of, um, or review I guess, of our system development charges, we want to look at our residential rates, and I am hopeful that we can go back to the process that worked so well 
about a year ago and engage some of those parties up front to make sure they understand the decisions and the discussions that are happening as part of this upcoming small review as well. Any questions? Well, I just want to just acknowledge I've had a number of opportunities to work with Deidre in the past and I think her ability to uh, work a spreadsheet and understand SDCs and getting in the weeds. Um, <laughs> Yeah, one smart cookie there, so I really appreciate your work and your effort. Thank you. Well, I, I have to say that um, <clears throat> to get complimented by the Home Builders Association over the issue of SDCs, <laughs> that is a heck of a hurdle to get across. <laughs> and I really have to compliment you for having done that. Um, the, it, I'll just leave it at that. I just think that's remarkable. So I thank you for, for the work that you did. Yeah. Commissioner. And Clackamas County, we care a lot about trust in government, and this is exactly how we do that. And it's very nice that it is being recognized because uh, there's a lot of skeptical people out there that get real frustrated, but when you involve them in the process, you yield much better results. So hats off to you, and hats off to Clackamas County and this board and the former board that put together our performance Clackamas and keeps us focused. So great work. Okay. Thank you. Our fourth awardee, uh, Kimberly Lippert, and from the Sheriff's Office with uh, Drive With a Cop. Is this mic? It's working too. Good. Um, I'm Kim Lippert with the Clackamas County Sheriff's Office, and I'm here today to thank everyone for uh, NACO awarding us with the Drive with a Cop Award, and I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to Sheriff Roberts. Hi, I'm uh, Sheriff Craig Roberts, and seated to my left is Elisa Krebs, and um, the NACO Award, before I get started, I just want to say that these are the two shining stars that make so many things happen at our office, and want to talk about incredible work that they've done as well. But uh, Drive with a Cop, I just have to tell you, started really as a result of uh, the tragedies and fatal car crashes of our teenagers. And we could sit back and respond to those situations, but one of the things that we decided to do is try and get ahead of this. And nationally, if you look at the statistics, it's, it's just terrifying to see the number of kids that die from oftentimes very simple accidents. And what we saw is the impact it was having on law enforcement, the community, and one of the things that we brought together was bringing law enforcement and teenagers together to uh, better educate our youth about driving. As a former driving instructor for law enforcement, uh, we have many of uh, the same things we want to teach uh, our youth, which is collision avoidance, you know, emergency stopping, the things to really that can keep you alive in a, in a tragedy uh, situation responding. So. Uh, we first partnered with Grace Chapel out in Wilsonville. Uh, first year, we actually uh, uh, had an amazing turnout. We had to turn folks away. We finally uh, moved up to Portland International Raceway. We partnered with um, uh, the Oregon State Sheriff's Association, who's been a huge supporter, State Farm Insurance, and Oregon Impact. And uh, as many of you know, we had a, a tragedy in Clackamas County. Uh, Maddie Higgins over there, it was a fatal car crash. and. Uh, her uh, mother and relatives have all really uh, stepped up to help support this. And uh, one of the things that they carried forward was Angel Five. And it was to remember five teenagers killed in our county. And um, she comes and speaks at the event and encourages other youth to really think about their driving because some of those actions can be life lasting. And uh, ever since we've been able to do this, we've really, uh, across Oregon, other sheriffs and chiefs have replicated the program, and I can just tell you it wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for these two young ladies that really spearheaded it, reached out to the community, and uh, made it all happen. So I want to thank these two for their incredible work. Thank Questions, you. anybody? Once again, the Sheriff's Department gets uh, acknowledged for uh, thinking ahead. So thank you very much for your work. Thank you. Thank you. 
I, I waited until all the awards were, were given um, to mention that of all the counties in the state of Oregon, we received the most uh, awards uh, for innovation. And it became very clear to me because I was at NACO, when you look at the list, we were number one. So thank, across the, obviously across the spectrum. So I wanna thank our, uh, everyone out there for understanding that when we innovate here, we actually have a duty and a responsibility to make sure that the rest of our colleagues, not only in our state, but across the nation, uh, understand that we're leaders in best practices and in innovation and uh, doing things better for our constituents. So thank all of you for that. And, and I hope we continue the trend of being the top winners of all the counties in the state of Oregon. I'll have to mention that to them and see if we might, we might want to, might want to move them on to give us a little more competition there, you know? So anyway, thanks again. Well, I I understand that we're supposed to uh, do a little photo op with our uh, reward award yes, recipients. Please, mm -hmm. uh, get everybody to come down. Mm. If everyone wants to come forward up here with your award. Um, How about uh, one more applause? Those folks are kind of. All right, thank you, Mr. Krupp. And we will move on to citizen communication. And we have one citizen communication today Les Poole. Les, if you want to come on up. Well, good morning. Les Poole, I live in Gladstone. I'll bet most of you know why I'm here. Um, and for those that don't, um, yesterday uh, there was an article that was put out by the Portland Tribune that makes it clear that myself and others are, are very, very concerned about the state's approach to tolling. I'm now a chief petitioner on a statewide measure that will require a public vote on tolling. And there's some confusion about what's going on out there. We're not here to prohibit tolling. Uh, tolling has historically been used to finance projects. Um, a good example here in Clackamas County would be with growth, we may someday see a need to replace the ferry. You replace the Canby Ferry with a bridge, you're building something. You're increasing capacity. If, if, you're, if there's a toll proposed for that and the citizens see the need, they're likely to approve it. But when ODOT decides, and the state, both together, but really from the legislature, that the approach to tolling will be what's, what's occurring, it, it's real, real simple to see that we're being treated like an ATM. And, and frankly, when I saw, and I've commented on this before, but when I saw in the legislature that we, we came out with a $5.3 billion transportation bill, and in that wasn't money to relieve the uh, bottleneck, the two-lane overloaded section of I-205, that was a red flag. 
And since that time, Metro and, and a number of entities have, have taken the concept of tolling and presented it in a way that will not stand. Um, by the way, current federal law certainly allows tolling to build things, not opposed to that. The federal law doesn't allow them to toll existing infrastructure, existing bridges and things um, arbitrarily. I'll use the word arbitrarily. Um, also, one considers how much money would be taken from citizens' pocketbooks and how much money would be, added, would be added to the delivery costs for all our food and products because those tolls would be much, much higher for trucks. We need to address our transportation priorities in Oregon. And I'll just conclude very simply by saying the current proposal for tolling is not the answer. Uh, I'll be very busy. I'm putting my life on hold. I'm happy to do it. I believe that strongly about it. As you know, I've been involved in transportation issues with the county here. Um, I can't say as long as Mark Gonzalez, but I've been doing it for a while. So we, uh, we will be making a press release today, and I certainly will be uh, sending a letter and some things and details to the county and all the local governments uh, so that everyone understands exactly what we're doing. Uh, we'll have a web page up today. We're making some last minute changes. Folks will be able to go online and sign the petition. Um, and the good thing about this, quite frankly, is this, this is an issue that is not partisan. This is a practical issue that I think we, we, we have a tremendous agreement on. So uh, please go to the Vehicle Transportation Alliance webpage. I mean webpage. I'm sorry, the Facebook page. That's the easiest way to take a look at the article and get up to date on what we're doing. And of course, uh, you'll be hearing from me and others in the future. Any quick questions? I don't have any. Does anybody else have any questions or comments? All right, thanks a lot. Okay, thank you, Les. Thank you, Les. That uh, concludes our citizen communication section. Uh, our, our next item is the consent agenda, and I'd ask the clerk to please read the consent agenda. Okay, today's consent agenda. Under Health, Housing, and Human Services, approval of amendment number one to the professional services agreement with Bridges to Change for peer support services, approval of amendment number one to the intergovernmental agreement with Estacada School District for the teen mentor program, approval of an intergovernmental agreement with the City of Sandy for operations for the Mount Hood Express bus service, under elected officials, approval of previous business meeting minutes, under Disaster Management, approval of Fiscal Year 2017 Emergency Management Performance Grant Revised Amendment Number 1 with the State of Oregon Office of Emergency Management, and approval of Fiscal Year 2017 Emergency Management Performance Grant Amendment Number 2 with the State of Oregon Office of Emergency Management. Under our Juvenile Department, approval of Amendment Number 9 to the Professional Services Contract with Parrot Creek child and family services to provide shelter services for youth approval of amendment number nine to the professional services contract with christian community placement center to provide shelter services for youth and approval of amendment number nine to the professional services contract with boys and girls aid society of oregon to provide shelter services for youth and that concludes today's consent agenda does anyone of the commissioners wish to remove or pull any item from the consent agenda? I see Commissioner Fisher, you have a question. Yeah, so I'm curious about number 10 for Parrot Creek. We have in our packet just Amendment 9 of, and yes. without, out of context. I mean, I don't understand the context of what this is. So we, um, <clears throat> Uh, contract with uh, Parrot, Parrot Creek to uh, provide uh, professional shelter services between the, the county juvenile department and Parrot, Parrot Creek, and this is a, a contract amendment uh, and uh, and a uh, renewal to continue uh, that particular uh, service. It's a one-time only six-month uh, contract uh, e extension uh, to pr provide such uh, such care. Uh, so uh, we've had this relationship for some time. Uh, this is um, 
not affiliated or related to other responsibilities that the county has with respect to uh, the lease and ownership and maintenance of the site. This is simply our juvenile department contracting uh, for specific shelter services for specific uh, things the juvenile department is responsible for doing. So. Okay, and just a question. I've read it a few times now, and I'm just not clear exactly what it is amending. Is it amending the amount of money or the time of the contract? I, I believe it's extending the contract uh, and the, uh, the cost of the extension is $170,000, actually 175 70 and 73 cents. So uh, the, uh, that, that's to add to what is uh, the maximum contract value up to about 1.8 million. So this is an existing contract. This would extend the uh, nature of that contract for these services and the remuneration for that extension is $170,000 or so. Okay. Does that help? Okay. Yeah, that does help. Thank okay. you. Good. Thanks. <clears throat> okay. Uh, the chair will entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. I move approval of the consent agenda. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda. Any qu further questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. County administrator update. Okay, well, I've got a couple of items of uh, good news for you. First, I wanted to share with you some uh, terrific feedback that we received regarding our weatherization program from a resident in Milwaukee. And as you uh, know, uh, this program provides uh, uh, help uh, to residents to reduce their heating and cooling costs and to help make their homes safer and uh, more comfortable. And this is a program provided through our Health, Housing, and Human Services Department. We got a very nice uh, communication uh, from uh, one of our residents stating that uh, Clackamas County's weatherization program makes it possible for seniors to be able to afford living in their home and to age in place. They are a credit to the community. And so I just wanted to thank uh, the resident uh, for providing this feedback and uh, say great work uh, to our uh, program staff uh, for providing this excellent service. Uh, I also uh, wanted to uh, remind folks that uh, the county offers monthly dental clinics uh, and the, these clinics provide, you know, sealants as uh, well as other dental services to uninsured and underinsured individuals and families in our community. Uh, we uh, hold these events at our Beaver Creek and uh, Sunnyside Health Clinics, uh, and they are primarily utilized by parents who um, don't want their kids to miss school. So. Uh, I wanted to mention that our staff performs a, a lot of work around in these clinics to help to provide what is a fun and inviting uh, atmosphere for these kids. Our next uh, Saturday uh, dental uh, event, uh, we've got two of them programmed in August, one for uh, August the 4th at uh, Beaver Creek and the other at uh, the Sunnyside Clinic on August the 25th and residents who are interested can call 503-655-8471 uh, to make an appointment. And then I also wanted to uh, let you know that over the past couple of days, I have participated in uh, interview processes for uh, the consideration of candidates uh, for what would be the first regional director for the uh, extension services uh, metro uh, region. Uh, commissioners received a, a, a presentation a couple of weeks ago from uh, the Oregon State University uh, Extension Service about a reorganization of the uh, uh, regional approach, and uh, in this case uh, in, involving Multnomah, Washington, and Clackamas counties, and uh, creating a, uh, they would create a region that would include those three counties and uh, they would have a uh, director hired. So this was the interview process for the individual who may serve as the first metro region director under this new organization. I can say uh, that uh, they had four great candidates that met with the extension service staff 
uh, and I was pleased to be able to sit in uh, on that and get to know each of the candidates uh, that are being considered for that. I, I will say one other thing that's um, pretty apparent. I, uh, that the services that uh, the extension uh, provides here in Clackamas County um, are unique and, you know, ab ab above the fold, really. Uh, the, uh, the fact that we have a, um, a service district that uh, raises uh, funds that are dedicated to providing extension services here in Clackamas County makes a significant difference in the things that we are able to do here uh, than, say, in Washington County and Multnomah County. And I think uh, the, one of the opportunities for this region being created is for both Multnomah and Washington County to get a chance to see um, how effective this has been for us here in Clackamas County. There was also uh, a great interest on the part of the candidates uh, in the uh, work that we're doing uh, to design and then to develop the uh, new building facility for the extension service here at, uh, at on the Red Soils campus, uh, looking at uh, cross-laminated uh, timber as a, uh, as a material uh, for that construction and a recognition that the facility that is being planned for and intended to be constructed here will actually be uh, quite a significant showcase in terms of uh, uh, contribution and capacity for extension services on the West Coast. Just thought I'd share that with you. So, good. Thank you, Mr. Crump. <clears throat> so we'll move on to the Commissioner Communications section of our agenda today. Uh, Commissioner Sabas. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, start out our week for me with uh, the ribbon cutting for the newly constructed replacement of the Clackamas Service Center. Uh, all of us were present there. Um, it was kind of, uh, I remember my first time going there about almost eight years ago, and uh, it was very a very heartfelt moment um, to see what was taking place there as far as feeding, clothing, and helping out a lot of people that uh, are in need. And um, they were really doing a lot with very little. And the Clackamas Service Center, the board members and so forth, the staff there had done excellent work. And it was also really the place where I actually participated in my first um, homeless count and um, really spent a whole day out over there um, talking to people that were using those services. And it's in an area where, um, in Clackamas County along the 82nd Avenue um, area where there's a lot of low-income uh, folks and uh, people that are living on the edge and some people that are um, past that where they really don't have a home. So um, a lot of good work and I, my congratulations to the Clackamas Service Center board and Deborah Mason, their, their, their uh, person uh, running that operation, did a fantastic job in a year's time. As some of you may not know, um, they experienced a fire a year ago and the building was burned, burned down. And uh, within a year's time, they've managed to uh, put it back together and it's a very nice facility. Um, a great improvement. Building looks very similar in shape and structure as it did before. Um, and it was great to see the outpouring of uh, people who contributed to uh, the rebuilding of that. And, you know, I know we, Clackamas County, uh, did our efforts in a number of ways to help them. And that was, uh, that was mentioned by Deborah Mason as well. But uh, that was really exciting to see that, that come back. Um, on a, on a more significant note, the kind of impacted me this week was um, Tuesday evening. Uh, there was a gathering um, in Jennings Lodge um, for their annual barbecue. And we were there in the shadows, in the shade, in the shadows of, of, of several hundred trees that are um, just in very short time, about 350 or so will be cut down and the buildings on that property will be cut down uh, for a small subdivision that'll be going in there. And um, so it was a great day, but somewhat sombering to realize where, what, was, what was around us would not be there in a year from now. Um, <clears throat> and um, subsequent to that was Wednesday morning and with a great discussion with the Economic Development Commission as far as, you know, Clackamas County development and what we really wanted to see and where we ought to grow or not to grow and good, good dialogue. <clears throat> but I, I made the comment that, and I do this on the heels of a campaign going door to door, uh, as I typically do, 
hearing from a lot of people that moved away from Portland uh, or Multnomah County and moved to Clackamas County for what it is. And we really need to, I've said this before, um, that you know, I think I coined this saying, keep Clackamas, Clackamas, but there is something special about our county that really draw lots of people here. That's why they live here. And um, I think we need to embrace that and cherish that and not seek to really change that in a way that uh, really harms our neighborhoods and harms the citizens that um, we're here to serve. And I think if we can focus our development in areas that have the least impact um, and have the most opportunity the least impact to our citizens and had the most opportunity to benefit our county is a wise one. And, and uh, looking east um, is far more, um, I think, beneficial than it is to uh, try to redevelop neighborhoods and displace people. With that, Portland cannot grow. The city of Portland cannot grow its boundaries. They have only one choice to develop, and that's to redevelop. And we're seeing significant negative impacts. And you can watch the news and see the impacts of what that means. And I think a lot of people want us to feel that we as a commission or we as the county <clears throat> ought to do our best to um, protect the quality of life, preserve the neighborhoods that need to be preserved. And, um, and unfortunately, we have to deal with the growth and deal with the growth in a way that is beneficial um, and has the least impacts. And I, I'm hoping that um, our discussions and our focus of looking towards the corridor, the Sunrise Corridor, where, um, we, where those opportunities exist, both for jobs, both for housing, both for um, development can occur and occur with benefit and very little negative impact. So, um, and last evening, to cap it off, was another discussion about some land use applications in which more neighborhoods are being impacted negatively as a result of development. And I think those development pressures, um, absent some opportunity east, uh, we need to relieve that pressure. And I, re I, you know, it was very sombering again to hear people upset last evening about those kinds of developments that are occurring. And it's, a, it's definitely a, a, a person's right to develop their property. And I think there's no way that we're suggesting we impede that. But I think we need to address those pressures and allow that to, to go where it is most, most uh, beneficial to folks and um, allow, allow that to take place, again, where um, there is no detriment. But um, uh, I'll, I'll leave it there and um, focus on trying to keep Clackamas uh, the great county that it is. That's what I have for today. Thank you, Commissioner Savas. Commissioner Fisher. Thank you. Vice Chair Humberston. <laughs> I want to piggyback on the wonderful presentations today for our NACO awards and share a little bit more about Wipeout. <laughs> so Gary Johnson did a great job in explaining the history of this, but I just want to embellish it just a little bit. So Judge Deanne Darling, who retired pretty recently as our juvenile court judge in Clackamas County, called me up one day and said, I've done an informal survey of the new mothers that are clerks in the courthouse, and they do not know that they are not supposed to flush baby wipes, and we need to do something about this. Well, the process is as simple as having a conversation with Drenda Howard, my policy coordinator, to say, I got this call from Judge Darling. What do you think we can do? And she says, well, I'll look into it. And lo and behold, it activated all of the different partners in Clackamas County, and it came up with this campaign, which has gone national, and it's quite a tribute to one person, Judge Deanne Darling, calling a county commissioner who talks to a very skilled policy advisor and gets the wheels of government moving. It reminds me back years ago when I went to a children's theater production about and there was a little song about getting on the path. You need to get on the path. And it was all these little examples for children about what they can do to help promote good practices. And a lot of it had to do with, you know, turning off the water when you're, when you're in the middle of brushing your teeth and making sure that you throw things, you don't use things unnecessarily. And it's all about what we do as individuals to get on the path. Well, we in Clackamas County, through all of our efforts, get on the path every day. And I just want to encourage folks to think about what we do in all that we do, whether it's bringing our own cup to work so that we're not using paper cups, 
Very good. <laughs> um, let, the, let the TV reflect that Chair Humberston picked up his coffee cup. Whether it's simple things is not using disposable straws. We know that those, those are difficult for the environment. Turning off the lights when we're not using them. Not keeping the air conditioning running in ways that uses up energy. Making sure that we do our part every single day to walk the walk, to get on the path. And I'm so proud of Clackamas County to say that we are on the path and we listen and we make progress on things that are important. Those are my comments for today. Thank you, Commissioner Fisher. Commissioner Schrader. Great. Well, to to uh, to, to to mention Commissioner Fisher again, uh, uh, she knows that we are we're dusting off our sustainability initiative mm. in the county, and we have been um, a leader in actually building, if not the first, one of the first green campuses here in the United States because but our buildings are, are, I think, LEED certified, I believe silver, maybe gold. So I'd have to check the, <laughs> I'd, I'd have to check the site of the building to see what level we're certified to and that we are committed that as we expand this campus with the uh, new courthouse, hopefully uh, in the future that we will follow a similar uh, a similar pathway and, and hopefully be using things like cross laminated timber and also as we move forward with our extension service to do a new building again, do it in a green sustainable way and model this and somewhere there's a NACO award in there. So uh, let's think about that, Don. <laughs> somewhere, so. somewhere there's a NACO award. In any case, I had a pretty full week. I had an opportunity to do a boat tour of the Upper Willamette with Catherine Farrell. And the reason uh, Catherine asked me to go was evidently uh, there, there have been some real, again, environmental issues going on with uh, concerns with wakeboarding and the bank erosion that seems to be associated with that. And I mentioned that to Commissioner Savas this morning who says that yes, indeed, he gets all those kinds of, um, on the being closer to the lower, River that that also seems to be an issue. So I did some research. There is a legislative group. I believe Karen Power is involved with it, or was was involved with some legislation looking at the policy gaps um, with weight wakeboarding and seeing okay what do we need to do to allow people to recreate on the river, um, but also you know get the word out that. Um, some of the, the weighting down of these boats with the intent of causing really big waves also has an environmental impact. Uh, and since we have such a, the river is kind of our lifeline here in more ways than one. Need I mention the legacy project and the unlock the locks project that uh, I do think that we need to maybe potentially get a briefing on this and start looking at it um, as a policy uh, a policy look at that. So that was, and, and it was significant. We actually took the boat up to Representative Kenner's house. And uh, he was very delighted to see us and actually pointed out where all the erosion was happening at his place. So, um, so good work. Went all the way up to Wilsonville, came home, and it was a nice way because it was a very, very hot day. It was really pleasant to be on the river that afternoon and really realize we have another policy issue we're going to have to address here. Also went to the Jennings Logs community picnic. It was very fun. Had some good fried chicken and uh, veggies. Uh, attended MPAC last night where we are you know, looking at the regional transportation plan and we'll be doing an advisory vote on the urban growth boundary expansion uh, in September. This is the first time that we have used the urban rural review, uh, reserves process for uh, the analysis of an urban growth boundary expansion. Uh, and it seems to be working very smoothly. It connects our cities more to the process where they have to uh, come up with a plan of how they're going to manage infrastructure for urban growth boundary expansion with the governance intact. So uh, more on that uh, as, we, as we keep go, um, looking at that. Regards to the regional transportation plan, uh, talking to Mayor Russ Axelrod, one of the things he pointed out to me was these big initiatives we have on the Willamette River, the Legacy, Falls Legacy Project, as well as the Unlock the Locks. So far, uh, the transportation piece of it, Commissioner Savas, <laughs> has not necessarily been included in the, the RTP 
yet. So um, I did ask DTD, and I wanted to get that material to you, to just give me the outline of what that process is. You probably know it off the top of your head, actually. But it's a real nexus of transportation and land use, and as these projects move forward, we're going to have to be cognizant of what the transportation impacts are, and I think we're going to have to get them on the, the RTB. So, so I just wanted to uh, point that out and hope that it's another way for us to collaborate, integrate land use and, and transportation. Went to the Clackamas Service Center. It was wonderful to see them have their new, uh, their new uh, facility there that will help people. I'm actually having uh, lunch with Jane Leo tomorrow, and the reason I'm having lunch with her is she is very interested in housing, and she's uh, the executive director of the Portland Metropolitan Association of Realtors. And she is very interested in helping students who are homeless find housing. And she wanted to talk to me about a model that they've worked on in Tacoma, Washington. So I will bring that back to the board. Um, I'm very grateful that Jane uh, pointed this out to me. And she's also a member of our uh, housing uh, discussion that we're having here. Um, all righty. So let me go to the word of the day. I'll get done here. Laconic. It's an adjective a few words. Did you know speech that is concise or terse is laconic? Sally gave a laconic speech about the successes of the library. Okay, arts and culture. Willamette Falls Heritage Area Coalition presents Music of the Oregon Trail with the Trail Band. The Willamette Falls Heritage Area Coalition, in partnership with the End of the Oregon Trail Interpretive Center and the Oregon City Parks and Recreation Department, will present a free outdoor concert by the Trail Band. Food and beverages will be available for purchase from on-site food cart vendors. Excuse me. In addition, a beverage station selling beer, wine, soda, and water will be on site. That's this Friday, July 27th. 6.30 p.m. at the end of the Oregon Trail Interpretive Center in Oregon City. Westland Historical Society presents History on Fire Ignite Talk. These rapid and engaging five-minute presentations will share images and stories about local and regional history in the Ignite Talk format. Sunday, July 29th, 4 p.m. at the Willamette Ale and Cider House in West Lynn. And to get more information, you can always go to clackmasartsalliance.org. Thank you, Commissioner Schrader. Right. <clears throat> well, I had the opportunity to enjoy some of the same events that my colleagues did this week, so I won't repeat them. Uh, I do want to address uh, comments I made last week when we had the discussion regarding night meetings to make sure that what I said was not taken out of context. Um, I had commented that I do a lot of going out to CPOs and other organizations and meetings and events and things where I get the opportunity to meet and listen to, to um, uh, our, our citizens about issues that are important to them and share what we're doing with them. That was in no way intended to say that we shouldn't have night meetings in one format or another. I do currently support the, the board's position on the, the quarterly meetings um, and, and want to see how that's going to work for us. Um, but I also understand that some folks come here at those night meetings so they can speak to the camera, so that the audience that's out there on that camera also hear their message. So it was in no way intended to say that folks shouldn't be able to come here, whether it's day or night, and, um, and present their message both to us and to the community at large. That said, um, I had the pleasure of going to the North Willamette Research and Extension Center um, open house yesterday. and just to talk a little bit about some of the things they do. In our region, we have over 240 plus um, crops that we grow and market, both um, locally and uh, internationally, and <coughs> everywhere in between. The um, North Willamette Research and Extension Center from Oregon State University does an incredible amount of research on everything from various and sundry flowers that will attract bees, the different species of bees that are available in the area to pollinate our food. Uh, they do hybridization of, of a variety of different crops, especially food crops, that uh, increases yield without necessarily having to use a lot of chemicals to do so. Uh, and they work on finding uh, solutions to invasive species, both insect and plant. Um, <clears throat> 
About 13 percent of our land in Clackamas County is actually available for, for um, agriculture. And so it's, what they do is very important to make sure that we do have a, a healthy local food source. One of their new programs is called the Beeve Drone Program, Better Than the Eye Aerial View Field Scouting for Plant Health Protection. What that is is using drones and special cameras that do multispectral digital imagery, they fly over the fields and though th that multispectral imagery can, can then tell them the health of the plants, whether the, whether the crops are stressed from lack of water or other problems, and that allows them to not only do it more quickly, uh, but more targetedly, and then they're able to uh, address whatever the stresses are on the plants, once again, increasing yield in a really uh, positive way. Um, the other two items, we've c we continue to work on the Cross Laminated Timber Initiative and the ISP Initiative, and staff are continuing to work uh, to develop those initiatives and prepare information for uh, my colleagues as we move forward. Uh, the last thing I have today, so that Mary doesn't have to tell me and remind me, is the dog. This is Rocky. He is a fine-looking fellow with a goofy disposition. He can walk on a leash. He enjoys playing outside and loves to learn new things. He's eager to please and wants to spend time with human friends. He's a cocker spaniel, so his coat will need consistent grooming and daily exercise will keep his mind and body healthy. We encourage you to meet him for a play date to get to know him. For more, more information about Rocky and other adoptable dogs, please contact the Clackamas County Dog Services at 503-655-8628 or www.clackamas.us forward slash dogs. And that's all I have for today. If there, no one has anything else, we stand adjourned. Thank you.